Hi everyone! Welcome to our Scientific Friday. I am Teacher Janelle and I will help you understand the different things around us. Come and join me in learning simplified scientific concepts because science is everywhere! Our topic for today is scientific investigation. In this lesson, we will answer the following questions. What is the importance and use of scientific investigation? What are the steps in conducting a scientific investigation? How can we apply scientific investigation in our daily lives? You might hesitate and think that scientific investigations are only exclusive for inventions or research and a lot of paperwork. Well, you are wrong. Try looking at the things around you. Have you ever felt curious about what is happening around us? Are you open to new knowledge? And do you have a mind that is naturally asking why and how? Those are the basic attributes that the blooming scientists like you possess. And with that, we are now ready for a scientific investigation. So, why is scientific investigation important and why do we use it? Well, with everything that is happening around us, especially in this time of pandemic, Scientific investigations are important because its main goal is to solve a problem. From simple to complex problems, the process of conducting a scientific investigation will ultimately lead to finding out solutions. It explains a natural phenomenon. Imagine living in a time where people think that they are being punished because of earthquakes and typhoons? Scientific investigations lead people to discover that natural phenomena such as typhoons and earthquakes happen because of Earth's natural movement. And we were able to distinguish them from superstitions. It aims to improve our quality of life. Your smartphones, television, laptop, and even your face mask and your pen and other forms of technology are products of scientific investigations. What would you do without them? It helps the scientific community to discover and formulate new concepts and theories. Now that everyone is staying at home during this pandemic, scientists around the world are finding out possible vaccines and cure for this virus. This is with the help of the previous scientific investigations done in the field of medicine. Now that we learned the importance and uses of scientific investigation, let us proceed to the steps of conducting a scientific investigation. First step, make an observation. When making an observation, we utilize our five senses. The primary senses we use are the sense of sight and hearing. The sense of taste, smell, and touch must be used with caution to ensure safety. Now, observation can be done in two ways, quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative observation involves the use of measurement such as temperature, weight, height, speed, among others. Qualitative observation involves description that may be of color, taste, texture, appearance, and others. Second step, state the problem. After observation, you will be able to identify the problem by asking what, how, why, when, 
and where. Third step, formulate the hypothesis. A hypothesis is also known as an intelligent guess or prediction. This will be your possible solution to the problem based from the observation that you have made. Fourth step, perform experiments. Experiments are the best way to test if your hypothesis is valid. Patience is important when performing experiments because you should perform your experiment several times until the results become consistent. Fifth step, state the conclusion. The results of your experiment that tested your hypothesis will help you create a conclusion. But oops, before concluding anything, make sure to avoid these errors. Errors in hypothesis. Formulating the wrong hypothesis may lead to wrong conclusions. Errors in experiments. Your hypothesis may be correct, but if your experiments are not done properly, it may affect your final result. Errors in observation and problem. When you have made the wrong observation because of bias or lack of utilizing materials to gather observation, it could lead you to repeat the whole process again. And that could be very tiring. If these errors happen, you will have to repeat the whole process again. So remember, patience is a virtue. But if these errors did not happen, then congratulations! Good for you! Whoa, that's a lot of steps. How can we remember all of these? Let us try this acronym. OPHEC. O for observation, P for problem, H for hypothesis, E for experiment, and C for conclusion. A lot easier, right? Now that we know the steps, what should we do next? How can we make use of this in our daily lives? Let us go through the process. Together, I will give you a situation. You are at home, and since most schools employ online learning, the internet is very essential. You know very well that a fast internet activity comes from a strong Wi Fi connection. However, you are currently struggling with your school tasks. That is because you notice that there is something wrong with your Wi-Fi connection. Remember that the first step is observation. You can use quantitative or qualitative. You turned on the Wi-Fi modem and your gadget successfully connected, but you notice that it takes two minutes to load a page. Sometimes it shows cannot connect to the internet. In our given situation, you observe how long it takes to load a page. That is quantitative observation. You were able to observe what is shown when you load the page and that is qualitative observation second step is stating the problem which make you ask what how why when or where you might ask why does it take so long to load a page only to find out that you're not connected to the internet. 
Your third step is stating the hypothesis or the predicted answer to your problem. You might say that your Wi-Fi signal is weak because your Wi-Fi modem has not been turned off for a long time and it needs a reboot. To test your hypothesis, the fourth step is experimentation. Remember that your experiment should support your hypothesis. So, in connection to your problem and hypothesis, you check out your Wi-Fi modem and try to turn it off and reboot. Remember, patience is important in experiments. Turning it off and rebooting might not work. So, you have to try other hypotheses and experiments like checking the gadget setting. Is it connected to the right Wi-Fi modem? Or checking your internet bill. Is your payment up to date? Or trying to contact your internet service provider. Are they having a system maintenance? Now, the fifth step is creating your conclusion. After several experiments, your conclusion will depend on which of your experiments work. However, remember that your prediction is that your Wi-Fi modem needs to be turned off and rebooted. But if it does not work, there might be an error in your prediction. Thus, it will lead you to try different ways to still solve your problem. No worries, it's alright to have your hypothesis wrong. What's important is that you still try to find a way to solve your problem. Whew! That was scientific. Today, we were able to discover that scientific investigation is important and can be used to do the following. Solve a problem. Explain a natural phenomenon. Improve quality of life and help the scientific community to formulate and create new theories and concepts. The steps to scientific investigation involves the acronym OPHEC. O for making an observation. P for stating the problem. H for formulating the hypothesis. E for conducting experiments. And C for stating the conclusion. I hope you learned a lot today. Join me again for our next Scientific Friday. And together, let us discover things around us because science is everywhere. See you again next Friday and have a wonderful weekend ahead.